research and discovery. Futurists. Deep underwater lie mysterious worlds that scientists are only now beginning to explore. The deep sea is completely unknown frontier territory. Everything you touch is potentially new. Everything you see is something that somebody may have not seen before. I went down with the submersible to go and see them, and it's really dark down there. If we don't have the lights of the submersible, you really don't see anything. In the darkness lie hidden reefs of what are known as cold water corals. We've got crustaceans and mollusks and all these invertebrates, and the fish come to feed on them, and then the bigger fish come to feed on them. It's late at night as research ship the Seward Johnson draws into harbour at Gulfport, Mississippi. There are many coral specialists on board, including Europeans collaborating with colleagues from the US. The scientists are tired, but happy. So we've just come in from a 12-day cruise. We've covered something like uh, two or 3,000 miles of ocean and uh, sampled coral reefs all the way from the southern Gulf of Mexico into the central Gulf. Uh, using a submersible and all kinds of other gear. At dawn, work begins to unload the carefully packed samples. Scientists from the Netherlands and Britain are working with colleagues from the US under a European-funded research program to better understand deep-water corals throughout the Atlantic. To work with the Americans, it's the opportunity to actually be able to do research on this side of the Atlantic. And to actually start comparing these, these systems because we think somehow all these cold water coral reefs are connected, but we don't know how yet. The Gulf Stream, like a river, starts in the Gulf of Mexico, flows around Florida, comes up off of the middle Car uh, Carolinas, shoots straight across to Europe and modifies European climate. As it does so, it's also transporting larvae of a variety of animals, the same coral reefs that are very important off Norway and off Scotland and off Ireland are the same corals that are important here on this side. The team used this submersible to get up close to the corals. And while most are the same species, called Lophelia, they certainly aren't identical. The corals look, for instance, very different from the corals we have on the European side. The corals here are quite thick. They make really thick skeletons. While on the European side, we have mainly really thin uh, skeletons. So there are loads of differences. And because of this new data, we try to figure, figure out how, how these changes, well, where the changes come from. Getting up close to the animals is a valuable and enlightening way to see how they behave in their natural habitat. The crabs are quite interesting. They're some of the more voracious critters on the reef. They roam all around and, and eat everything they can find. Uh, there's one uh, species of crab-like uh, critter called a um, squat lobster and they sit up in the top of the coral with their arms outraised and they grab things as they swim by. We've seen them grab midwater fish like hatchet fish, they grab squid, uh, they eat uh, tunicates out of the water column. Back on the dockside, the Dutch team are loading up their deep water probe known as a lander. It's been sitting on the sea floor for the past year, recording water temperature, salinity and current speed right next to the corals. Identical devices are used in European waters, meaning data can be compared like for like.
what we're trying to look is also if we see like daily variability near the seafloor, but also for instance seasonal changes or annual changes even. Uh, we're close to like New Orleans and we all know about the hurricanes that are passing by here. And maybe these hurricanes we could also see in our records here. Gulfport was hit hard by Hurricane Katrina and still bears the scars. The corals may carry a record of that storm, but also many other climatic events, as their colonies are built up over thousands of years. So this is a, a black coral um, that we collected uh, off in the Gulf of Mexico, probably at about uh, 500 meters depth. The value to us is that these are a chemical archive um, the rings are like tree rings. They, they put down a ring every year. We can analyze the chemicals in the ring and find out all kinds of things about ocean ecology, uh, ocean history, uh, ocean climate, uh, going back several thousand years. This doesn't give a real good impression of what it looks like alive. A lot of this, these little uh, fine branches break off. This thing is big, like this, and the branches are quite flexible when it's alive. So they face into the current, and the little uh, coral animals come out and feed on the plankton. Despite being hidden deep underwater, these intricate ecosystems are still affected by man. They can be damaged by deep sea trawling and suffer from pollution. The ocean absorbs a vast amount of the carbon dioxide that we're releasing. It just sucks it up. And it doesn't just stay in the surface layers because the ocean's constantly moving. It gets pulled down to the depths. And the problem with that is when you dissolve carbon dioxide in water, it turns it acidic. And the skeletons of the animals that form these reefs, the corals, they dissolve in acid. The scientists here are concerned that deep water corals should be not only studied, but also preserved. We have a, a, an oasis in the deep sea desert, and, and it needs to stay that way. You know, we just don't know how valuable it is, so we should protect it. It's believed there are hundreds more deep water coral colonies yet to be discovered throughout the Atlantic. <laughs>